One night in 1975, I sat in my little apartment and started to choose the path I was now to take. I had to again decide which daddy's path I would follow, my rich dad's or my poor dad's. I had been off track for 10 years and it was now time to get back on course. These are a few of the decisions I've made and have continued to create through the years. Step 1. Decide to be rich. That night in 1975, I had to stop feeling sorry for myself and decide again to be wealthy. I went over a few of the lessons my rich dad had given me. Lessons that were more important than money because they would ultimately create the financial empire I wanted. I sat quietly that night and my course began all over again. I could hear my rich dad speaking. The only difference between the rich, poor, and middle class, he explained, is the sort of lifestyle they desire. You don't have to be psychic to tell someone's future. If you hear the words a person uses, they will tell you their future. Rich dad believed the words were a person's most important tool. He always reminded me to seek the words I spoke, simply because he thought that the words you speak and the words you believe ultimately become the world you live in. He often quoted the Old Testament and the word became flesh. So that night, I remember Rich Dad reminding me to hear different people's words. I noticed that poor people often said, I just need enough money to cover the rent. I need a few dollars to get to the next payday. After I pay my bills, I do not understand how my family can afford to eat. Individuals who use words like these often focused only on financial survival. Rich Dad often referred to these people as bad people because they were poor managers of money. Therefore, a person who thought or spoke words such as these were constantly fighting for financial survival, irrespective of how much money they made. The middle class used different words because they had different ideas about how to use their money. Our home is our most important asset and our largest single investment. We are placing a few dollars aside every month so we can afford the down payment on our dream home. We're saving money for our children's college education and our retirement. I noticed that the middle class focused on comfort. That is why so many say, I do not want to be rich, I only need to be comfortable. That night, I remember the words my rich daddy's rich friends used. How did you fund your shopping center? Did you syndicate it using a joint venture partnership? Or did you go to a hard money lender for the interim money? My underwriter has a new private placement, pre-IPO offering. Would you like a position in it? I purchased the shares through my company because the long-term tax implications are better. The rich used the vocabulary found in the asset column. Rich Dad said, The rich are rich because they are not focused on day-to-day short-term survival or the experience column as the bad are. Nor the rich focused on relaxation and acquisition of liabilities using credit since the middle class is. Many times, the rich will forsake meals, a steady paycheck, a holiday, or the comfort of a great residence to develop or acquire real assets. So decide to be rich even if you're broke and penniless today. Poor is a state of mind where thoughts such as I cannot afford it or live under your means come from. The opening chapter of the Cashflow Quadrant is called why don't you get a job? It begins with my wife Kim and I being homeless for about three weeks. Even though we were virtually out of money, we continued to try to become rich, to create a company, and invest through that business. Today, even though we have plenty of money in several companies, nothing much has changed. We continue to create businesses, reinvest in our business, and invest through those companies. In the cash flow quadrant, I wrote about B do have. B is the most important part of the three word formula. 
Most people want to have what the rich have, but they often aren't ready to do what the rich do, to have what the rich have. So if you have money or not, it's important to be rich if you decide to do so, which means being prepared to make being wealthy more important than residing financially or being comfortable. Step 2. Decide what kind of money issues you want. There are only two kinds of money problems, not enough money or too much cash. Unfortunately, the kind of money problem most people know is not enough money. Rich Dad stressed that his son Mike and I know not only how to make money but what to do with the money we made. Rich Dad said, most individuals know how to work for money, but they do not know how to have money and people work for them. He taught us how to plan on having too much cash. He said, if you would like to be rich, you must make sure your surplus money generates more excess money. You must know what to do with your excess money before it gets to you. Most people, when they get any excess money, spend it foolishly or just park it in the bank. So decide what kind of money problems you want. Step 3. Write your plan and follow it. After choosing between wealthy, poor, or middle class, and then choosing between a lot of money or too little cash, it is time to write your plan. If you have chosen to be rich, even though you are broke now, and have decided to have the problem of too much money, continue reading. If you do not plan to be rich or to have too much money, then you need not read any farther. Rich Dad's plan started with a few basic aims. Change the character of your income. Begin a part-time business. 2. Change the character of your expenses. Convert personal expenses into business expenses. 3. Place your company within a legal entity. 4. Have your business buy your assets. If you are prepared to be somewhat uncomfortable to become very rich and retire early, create your plan, even though you may be broke but not poor now. And if you are already rich, Rich Dad's plan may help you become richer and happier, even beyond your wildest dreams. Step 4. Decide on where you need to do your banking. Rich Dad often said that you could tell the difference between wealthy, poor, and middle class by where they went to receive their money or to do their banking. Rich Dad said, a poor man's bank is a pawn shop. A pawn shop lends money on assets that a banker wouldn't loan money on. When a poor person is short of money, they will often go to the pawn shop and place their chainsaw, microwave oven, jewelry, TV sets, tools, or watches up as security. The pawn shop provides them cents on the dollar because what the poor spend their money on is not worth anything after they purchase it anyway. The pawn shop makes money by charging legal, usurious interest rates. The middle class has the credit worthiness to use banks, savings, and loans, or credit unions for their lines of credit. A popular type of credit for this group is the charge card, which is easy to acquire. The rich also use banks. They frequently use different banks. They use the help of investment bankers to find private capital from wealthy individuals or money from institutions such as pension funds, insurance companies, or the stock exchange. The rich, if effective as business people, have fewer issues raising huge amounts of money and at better interest rates. Step 5. Choose your friends and partners wisely. One of the reasons the rich get richer is because they spend time with other wealthy people. Most of my best investments come from my wealthy friends, not from my stockbrokers or property brokers. It is important to know if an individual's aspirations would be as wealthy, comfortable, or just survive. Friends who merely need to be comfortable or endure will not understand why you would like to be rich and may automatically pull you down. And moreover, the investment tips I get from those who only need to be comfortable are often tips on investments 
that no one else wants. How can you find those that are rich and would like to be rich? Rich Dad has an easy answer. It's what you know that determines who you know. If you would like to change who you know, just change what you know. So the most important investment you can make is in your financial education and financial experience. Invest in that initial and the people you spend time with will change.